area that um, is, is damaged has been hit very hard, so you have many trees across the roadways. So um, a lot of people will be finding travel difficult even tomorrow. We're about 10 minutes away from our uh, 11 o'clock newscast, and we will be bringing you uh, all the news uh, of the evening in, in addition to complete coverage of uh, tonight's tornado in uh, North Bullitt County and as it affected Spencer County tonight. We were looking at a live picture from Sky 11 and let's go to George Sells uh, who is uh, aloft in Sky 11 has been since uh, just after the storm passed through tonight and George it, it, it would appear that uh, that traffic is is moving in that area but this is uh, still uh, a, a, a place of much activity. That's right Gary um, I would say that while the traffic is moving on I-65, uh, if you asked anybody uh, down below, they would say if you're driving by on I-65 to keep on going, because uh, sightseers are the last thing they need right now, as is the case often in these kind of things. Uh, you're seeing, as I said, I-65, Brooks Road crossing over the top there, and you're seeing one of several roadblocks uh, that surround the uh, affected area where police have got things shut down. They're not letting anybody in. Uh, pretty much at all except for emergency vehicles. Uh, if you look throughout the area, it's just a mess out here as you saw earlier on uh, from the pictures earlier we were able to show you a swath about seven miles long, roughly a quarter mile wide in spots uh, of pure devastation. About all you can see now in darkness uh, are the flashing lights of the various emergency vehicles and uh, it's not a whole lot to see at this point uh, from up here. The darkness covering up an absolutely horrific scene. Uh, your reaction and mine were both very similar. When we first saw the uh, area of damage, when we first flew over here, uh, at this point, darkness kind of covering that up. Uh, right now, emergency vehicles are the main brunt of the activity out here. Gary? All right, thank you very much, George Sells. Uh, we want to pass along a little bit of information that um, we have received from the Associated Press. And it, and it says officials confirm that tornadoes touched down in two spots south of Louisville in northeastern Bullitt County. So uh, we have been watching. That comes from uh, John Bollinger of um, the National Weather Service here in Louisville. Also something interesting to pass along, a state representative from that area, Alan Miracle, said um, apparently low number of injuries. He is, he is kind of confirming what we have thought before. He was in his uh, vehicle with uh, his son. He was in his truck with his son. When the storm hit, it picked up the vehicle and slammed it back down to the pavement. Mm. So uh, that was a very frightening situation for him. Um, uh, Bollinger from the National uh, Weather Service said one tornado touched down around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time near the Bullet and Jefferson County line. Another hit around 6.55 p.m. at Mount Washington. So if that holds up, these tornadoes were actually um, 25 minutes apart. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll find out if it was indeed. And that, that would be um, even, even more unnerving. But we okay. do know that at that time, we had a lot of warnings out. Let's, uh, speaking of the Mount Washington tornado, which apparently was the latter of the two, about 6.55, let's, we have Donnie Jesse on the line from Mount Washington. Donnie, uh, uh, we quoted a time here of about 6.55. Does that jive with what, uh, what you saw in, in your neighborhood? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty close to when, it, when we first noticed it. Mm -hmm. What did you see? Uh, I understand you were an eyewitness. Well, I live off of Blamo <laughs> Lane, off of 44. And, you know, I was in the backyard, and, you know, we thought it was just going to come a rain cloud. We thought it had missed us completely. And my wife noticed it first. We seen it when it formed up. And what it actually looked like, looked like where the, the clouds had come together, and they just started a, a real slow swirling process. And, uh, you know, my first thing we did, we, you know, I got the wife and, the, and the, my kids, and we sent them across the street to a cellar. And, uh, I mean, the wind never got up here. We had no winds. I mean, I got trees, big trees in my yard. I had no damage whatsoever. I'm seven tenths of a mile off of 44, mm -hmm. and I had no damage. Mm. And I had some friends that lived in Mount Washington. So as soon as the storm was over, I mean, I, I you know I jumped in my car and I went up there real quick to check on them. And the Northfield subdivision in Mount Washington is looks to be, uh, you know, to me, I've got a little t TV here. We have no electricity. And the Northfield subdivision, it looks... Uh, since this uh, storm uh, swept through the area just around 7 o'clock tonight, and George, uh, you're still a, still a much activity out there, I guess, and uh, what's going on at this hour? Well, Gary, it's very busy, a whole lot of activity. If you take a look down right now, uh, the most obvious concern from the air is traffic. Uh, Brooks Road has been shut down. In fact, roads 
coming into this area all around are closed down. Uh, they're trying to keep as many people out as possible. About the only activity you see out in the areas of damage which you really can't see too well because of the darkness, but it's a, a few flashing lights here and there from emergency vehicles. Uh, if you look out this way, we're kind of uh, spinning around now to take a look at some of these uh, emergency vehicles out this way. Uh, that's about all that's happening, and it's tough to see from the air. Of course, the really dramatic pictures came from earlier today, if we can go to some videotape. Uh, here you see what this looked like before darkness fell. Home after home just completely destroyed. Uh, from looking at our aircraft charts up here, it appears to be about a seven-mile stretch, beginning uh, right around I-65 and heading all the way down to Mount Washington. At some points, it's a good quarter mile wide, and there is an incredible amount of destruction. I think it's safe to say hundreds of homes completely destroyed by this twister or set of twisters that moved through the area around 7 o'clock this evening. Uh, where there weren't homes destroyed, there were trees down, that sort of thing and uh, it's an absolute mess. It was absolutely shocking. Uh, Gary and Melissa both said throughout the night that as you first moved into this area, we, as we first moved into this area, we weren't quite knowing what to expect. I don't think anybody knew that uh, they were going to see what we saw. We've moved over now over Preston Highway here, and you're looking down at uh, what, what appears to be the main command center. That's the fire station that is across Preston Highway and about a quarter mile down from uh, one of these subdivisions that has had the most damage in the area. That's the Tanyard Springs subdivision uh, here uh, in the uh, North Bullock County area. We're in North Bullock County uh, just below the Jefferson County line, and there's a lot of activity happening down there right now. Uh, a lot of people trying to get in there and just see what there is to see, see if anybody's hurt, trying to find people and that sort of thing. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, George Sells, who has been aloft in Sky 11 from the very beginning of our coverage now uh, four hours ago. We witnessed what we believe is the worst tornado damage in this area in Kentuckiana since the 74 tornado. And back on the ground tonight, officials are picking through the damage, trying to gather all the information they can. Jim Turner is at Tanyard Springs Subdivision, one of the hardest hit areas that is just off Preston Highway in Bullitt County. Jim, what can you tell us there tonight? We're just outside the entrance to the Tanyard Springs subdivision. This is an area that they've closed off to the public. They've closed it to the media. The most extensive damage is just off behind me where you can see all the lights, the flashing lights, the sirens. They're still not letting anyone into the area except for LG&E, except for phone company employees, people who have to get in and restore essential services to the Tanyard Springs neighborhood. Earlier in the evening, we did have a photographer in the neighborhood, and he talked to a woman named Kathy Carmichael about the damage to her home and to the neighborhood. Well, you, you could see the clouds forming around into like a cylinder, and I mean, you could see them start spinning. And my neighbor called me, and she said, look at your front door, and that, that's what I saw was the clouds were just moving real fast, and they were, and I, we, then we went to the basement. I didn't, I didn't want to see no more. <laughs> This is why she wanted to stay in her basement. This is a church in the subdivision, Summit Hills Fellowship Church of the Nazarene. It suffered extensive damage. The homes in Tanyard Springs, some weren't touched, others are trashed. Some of the residents in the neighborhood have not been able to get to their homes. Others have been able to get to their homes, but it's been a tough night for everyone, whether their home was damaged or not, because either they have damage or they don't have damage and they don't know it and they can't get to their homes. And that video we just showed you was some of the damage that is the least of the damage. Throughout the night, we've shown you the more extensive damage from Sky 11. And you can see from the Sky 11 pictures that George showed you just how bad it is just behind us, Gary, Melissa. All right, Jim Turner reporting live tonight from Tanyard Springs, one of the hardest hit areas. We sh will tell you in just a few minutes information about shelters in the area. That will be especially important to those people who live in that area that Jim was just talking about. If you need that information, then grab a pen and paper or whatever, and we'll tell you about it in just a moment. Right now, we want to go to our Stephanie Collins. She just returned from Mount Washington tonight. And uh, Stephanie, what can yeah. you tell us about what you saw there? Well, Melissa, we took Interstate 65 and then took the Mount Washington exit. And, you know, as soon as we pulled off the interstate, you could see power lines down, power out across that whole area and trees down. But as we got closer into Mount Washington, it absolutely became apparent what had happened to this community. 
Now we're looking at some video here at the high, off Highway 44 and the Northfield neighborhood. Lumber, home insulation, clothes strewn across yards leading up to shelves where homes minutes earlier had stood. Volunteer police from Jefferson County patrolled the neighborhood and were waiting for help from the National Guard. Everyone we talked to said it's a miracle the tonight they're alive. Mount Washington, where at least 40 homes were ripped apart when a tornado came through here. We're going to talk to Daryl Harold. Behind us is what's left of his home right now. What happened, sir? Uh, I don't know. A little bit after seven, we come from the Little League field, and uh, uh, they had the sirens go off, so they canceled the game, and a lot of the parents, you know, come back to their houses, and uh, we just got in the hallway bathroom, and it sounded like a like a train. You hear all these stories and everything that everybody says. It, it's true, you know. Get in the hallway bathroom. We did that, and. Uh, that's the only part of the house is actually, you know, in good shape. Uh, you see, our car was in a garage. This car here, it's outside the garage right now. I know you, the neighbor across the street was in his hallway bathroom. And You had children at home? Yeah, well, all five of us was in a little small bathroom in the hallway. I got three kids. and. Uh, what did you think when you first walked out and saw them? Uh, I don't know how anybody lived through it. Yeah. I really don't. I don't know how anybody, you know, anybody lived through these things because there's, you know, tons of damage. Thank you for talking okay. to us. And up and down the streets here, just outside Mount Washington, it's the same story for many folks that we've talked to, all saying that it was just a blessing that they lived through this. Now, most of the people we talked to said that they believe that there had to be more than one tornado. We'll have to wait for official com confirmation on that. They said that they saw one come through, disappear, then they thought they saw another one. So, Melissa, folks there, you can see that there was just absolute destruction of the Northfield neighborhood. Kind of a strange coincidence. Back in 1974, we were talking about the Northfield neighborhood right. then that got yeah. hit. Yeah. Um, but you can see the, the amount of destruction when you're just on the ground walking through there. Folks, Hopeful, though, that the police are staying through the night because of reports of looting in that area. Mm -hmm. They've also gotten a lot of help from uh, volunteers from Jefferson County who are down there, police departments helping, walking the neighborhoods, making sure that no one is stuck inside any of these homes. When we left, there was a report that they were going to go to one apartment where they thought maybe somebody was stuck inside that apartment. We have not heard back yet, though, to confirm whether or not anyone, in fact, was trapped inside one of those homes. All right, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Gary and I were just talking about an odd coincidence, uh, a Northfield and a Northfield. Well, you know, with the popularity of video cameras inevitably in a storm like this, someone is able to catch it on videotape. And tonight, we had several calls from many of our viewers about video you shot of the tornadoes. This video is from Mount Washington, the Mount Washington area. And uh, we want you now to look at the winds whipping through and the funnel cloud. You'll see it as it takes shape along the clouds. Tony Glass captured this tornado. There you see how huge it was. Forming and moving around his neighborhood on Linwood Drive around 7 o'clock tonight. You'll see it go up into the air. And here as Tony describes what he saw. About five minutes till 7, we noticed a funnel cloud coming between these two houses here. Yeah. Uh, I got the camera out, started watching it. 